Coming up tonight, get all the details on the brand new Battlefield 4 Naval Strike update. We sit down with legendary Nim to talk some Hearthstone. And we'll give you a look into the upcoming LCS NA matches for the weekend. And find out what's coming in today's daily news. Greetings and welcome to the Studio One in Berlin, Germany. I'm your host, Dan Cho, bringing the latest from the esports industry. Today is March 21st, and on this day in esports history, Team World Elite, the very first esports club based in China, formed their first League of Legends squad in 2011. The newly formed lineup quickly achieved success in major tournaments and became famous in the world LOL arena. Happy birthday, World Elite, and good luck in the future. In spite of the fact that PXL is just around the corner, Web1 has surprisingly enough opted to part ways with the team following what the organization described as a lack of investment, motivation, and availability from certain members of the squad. As a result of yet another setback pertaining to the ill-fated Counter-Strike Global Offensive Division, Web1 have also decided to stop supporting the game for the foreseeable future, which means that their team, which consisted of Krav, Bryce, Tits, Meta, and Minar, are now all officially homeless. Massive multiplayer online shooter Battlefield 4 will be receiving a new update featuring water and lots of it. Naval Strike will feature four multiplayer maps that are new, all located in South Chinese seas. The four maps in question are called Lost Island, Nanshu Strike, Wave Breaker, and Operation Mortar. In addition to the new maps, the DLC will feature five new weapons, an amphibious hovercraft, two new weapon add-ons, but no partridges in a pear tree. The most interesting update for Battlefield 4, however, is something called Titan. No, we're not talking about gigantic robots falling from the sky. We're talking about Battlefield 4's newest game mode. Titan was launched in Battlefield 2142. They renamed it to a more, less cool sounding carrier assault for Battlefield 4. If you haven't been playing the mode before, it works like this. You start out on your carrier and you have to capture missile launchers in order to take down the enemy carrier, which you can board it once it passes a 50% threshold. And even though the game type doesn't sound like it might make an appearance in the eSports circuit, still fun and exciting for its release. Naval Strike will set sail on the 25th of March for premium members. Non-premium will have to wait until the 8th of April. One for All was a fun game mode in League of Legends, but it, like all game modes, it eventually got taken out. Of course, that left some unhappy people, all of whom began gunning for all of One for All's return. And naturally, what the customer wants, they might eventually get. If you're one of those people who have been hankering for more One for All action, we have good news for you. Riot's lead champion designer, Medler, confirmed the triumphant return of the game mode. Unfortunately, no information has been released as of yet in regards to when it will be back or about any of the upcoming game modes Riot has experimented with in the past. That said, this remains a good sign. One may mark the start of Riot permanently adding new game modes to League of Legends. Power Rangers announced that Vital Vitaly XZZ Damostoy has left the building. His departure came about after several meetings and his discussions, and it is, as far as we understand it, a mutual decision. Power Rangers will be participating in tournaments such as Star Series, and though it's all thanks to the aid of Roman Scandal Sendentikov, Scandal has functioned as a stand-in player for PR numerous times in 2014, and he will be helping them once again. The PR management also announced that negotiations are being made for Scandal to permanently join the squad. Joy's days. Nothing is official yet, but it seems that both sides are happy with the team's performance so far, and they will be attempting to reach a solid agreement in the near future. Earlier this week, I had a chance to sit down and catch up with one and only Nimsh, hot off of his IEM championship win. I'm joined on the line by Marcin Nimshvilevich, who just come off of his IEM Katowice win. Congratulations, man. Oh, thank you so much. It was a great experience. So talk to me about your tournament experience. It was the first Hearthstone event that IEM has run, one of its kind because tournaments haven't really gotten used to running live, uh, live event tournaments. You know, State Story Cup was still kind of informal because it's in an apartment, but this is on a big stage. How was the entire thing for you? 
Oh, as I said, it, w it was a great experience. Um, it was my first time on a, on a stage like that. It was a, a big stage in front of a, of a big audience. Um, I had some experience with uh, with an audience when uh, I was playing World of Warcraft TCG, but uh, it's totally different because in World TCG you don't have the cameras and you, you just play against one guy and uh, you have a couple people around you, like uh, five to twelve, and that's basically it. And uh, here it was like I was in front of a computer and uh, when I was not looking at the screen I could um, see like all the rows filled with people uh, watching me um, and also watching me on a big screen as well so it was pretty cool hmm, I bet now it was must have been even better and sweeter victory for you because you won on homeland soil uh, you are from Poland and you are the Polish representative in Katowice how much does that amplify the win for you Oh, it's um, it's a big amplification. I mean, it's um, it's always when you're um, fighting on your own ground, you feel like you can't lose because you will uh, really disappoint your own audience. And on the other hand, it's, you really want to win to prove that, he, hey guys, like I'm here standing on my Polish ground, and this is where I'm the strongest. So if I lose here. It's a it's a very bad thing to do. So when when I actually won on the Polish ground, um, it was a really great feeling. And um, I had some experience with the with the same thing in Wild TCG as well because I was defending. Um, and the, the, there was the first Wild TCG tournament in Poznan uh, a couple of years ago, and, and there as well I was defending the title, and uh, I won as well. So it seems like the Polish ground is really empowering me, and I hope it uh, will also work abroad. What do you think about some of the other players, including the other Polish player Lothar, as well as Artosis and Cynex? Uh, do you feel like, did you feel very confident against these players throughout the entire thing? Oh, not at all. It's like Cynex was um, the biggest obstacle uh, I, I knew before that I will be uh, playing against him, and he was a mystery. So um, when I'm playing uh, against people, I try to get as much information as possible uh, to know their preference, what kinds of decks they are, they are playing, if they are aggressive or control players. And uh, about Cynex, there was like no information uh, at all in the internet. So I had to prepare for an unexpected. And well, um, Artosis, I know he, I know his style, so I knew how to prepare against him. It's, it doesn't mean that he was an, an easy opponent. Like everybody is a contender, everybody is a, is a strong opponent here. And um, in Hearthstone, like differences are pretty small with with players, so you really have to use um, as much like uh, tools to, to win as possible. Uh, thank you so much for taking a few minutes to join me on this call and talk about your win. Uh, do you have any last comments, shouts, and thank yous before we let you go? Yeah, definitely. Shout out, big shout out to my team, Dogger House, and um, to all the fans and um, all people at home who watched. And um, shout out to you, Frodo, uh, <laughs> for being there, actually, like talking to us as well. And um, yeah, thank you so much for having me. And I hope to be uh, in those kinds of tournaments in the future and I perform well. You can follow Nimsh on Twitter at Nimsh TV and check out his Twitch channel to see when he's streaming. Thank you again, Marcin, for joining me and congratulations on your win. Thank you. I also asked Nimsh about his secret to his mage deck, and he even told me that it was just for mind games to throw his opponents off guard. Definitely a great win for him. Can't wait to see more Hearthstone from IEM in the upcoming seasons. Our partners from GameFi had an interview with the manager of CIS, a Chinese Dota 2 team who recently put Black into their lineup. Let's see what CIS is up to. CIS, a new Chinese Dota 2 force, performed quite well in Cena Cup Supernova Season 3, but now it seems they are fading away. They have yet to win a single game in Star Ladder Season 9, despite their previous impressive play. This is not really a surprise for the Dota 2 community, because many believe that CIS is too young to maintain their good form after making their initial splash. However, some fans found that recently, CIS's five team members were playing in a Star Ladder game, including Black with a CIS logo, who was nicknamed Little Bee God by the Chinese community. Later, Black explained on his Chinese Twitter, Weibo, that he had been invited by CIS to play with them, and now he has started his training in the base of CIS. Our partner GameFi reached out to the manager of CIS via telephone. Here he said, so far, we have not signed the contract with Black, since his transfer is not all settled down yet, so we can't announce formally that Black will play for CIS for sure. Right now, we would say that Black is on a trial in our team. 
Just like what he said, CIS is trying their best to negotiate with Black's current team, LGD, an association of China eSport. And meanwhile, Black is still on his trial. But if everything goes well in future, Black will definitely enhance the entire competitiveness of CIS. Here the manager of CIS also told us the plan of changing roster after Black's joining. I think Ruoli will be replaced, since first he is currently not in good form. Besides, he is still very young and we think it would be better for him to continue his studies. That's also what he wants now. Judging by how they played in house before, it is predicted that Black will still play in first position and June will possibly play in the fifth position as the replacement of Ruoli. Let's see if CIS, armed with an updated roster, can bring us more surprises and impressive play in the future. Thanks to our partner GameFi and cool update about Black seeing a foreigner on a Chinese team. Can't wait to see more exclusive content coming in from GameFi. Good luck to the new CIS roster and we'll see how Black works out. It's time for a short break. When we return, we'll take a look at some of the best and worst moments in recent gaming history. We're bringing you some insight into the upcoming Acer Team Story Cup 3, and we introduce our upcoming host for next week. Stay tuned for all the info. Daily News returns right after this. Welcome back to the desk. Before we continue with the latest in esports today, we have prepared a special announcement from ESGN TV. Starting on Monday, Jason J. Atkins will be joining us for the news and other activities here at ESGN TV. Jason has been the scene for more than 10 years and has provided coverage for big games and huge, including League of Legends, Call of Duty, Counter Strike, Quake, Halo, and Warcraft 3. 29-year-old esports veteran portfolio is no slouch. He's worked with multiple big-name organizations like WCG and DreamHack. Man, can you imagine the airline miles he must have racked up? No doubt about it, Jason Atkins will be helping us to bring esports to the next level. Otherwise, you might have to answer to our shadowy overlords. And you don't want to risk that to the race. Enough about that, it's Friday, and once again, we have gathered the best and worst of gaming for you. Let's start with some of the best plays in recent memory. Oh my god, one of the best cards I could have drawn. One of the best. If not the best card. Oh my god. I can't attack him. I can't. I really cannot afford to attack right now. Um, you know, if I get a flare, it can all be solved. It can all be solved using a flare. Now, obviously, I want to attack with my Sun Fury because I this gets bounced back to my hand. Look, this is very obvious. Like, obviously, I want to attack with my Sun Fury, but I'd much rather get a flare and be done with it, right? Good job, Amaz. And of course, just like we promised, here are some of the less best plays. Have even more fun. These tanks, but the Mutalist count is just a little bit too high. Ingrid now streaming forward with Zerglings, Mutas, everything is overrunning the fourth by MMA. Wait, oh! what? What?
Did Idra just leave another one game? Okay, never mind. Ready, sir. What the? Ghost user in a miscalculated nuke from the Terran player. Getting that fungal, but their EMP is coating yeah. the infestors. They're removing them from the fight. The great concave seems to be the weapon of choice here, but he's, he's gonna walk oh, into his own. Baba, Baba, no! Don't you do oh, it. Oh, oh, he did it! Oh, oh, holy oh. shit! It's too bad. It's too bad. It's time for a short break. When we come back, we'll bring you an in-depth preview of the LCS North American matches set to happen this weekend. Also, I'll walk you through the upcoming matches of the Acer Team Story Cup number three. You won't want to miss it. The Daily News will be right back. Welcome back to the Daily News. Tonight is the last episode of StarCraft II Fight Night Arcade Edition. Make sure to tune in to find out who is going to get their portion of the 2000 prize pool with Nathanius and Harstum here at ESGNTV.com. Put on your sunglasses and fasten your seatbelts because we're coming back to Germany. After the successful Sea Story Cup by Take TV, we are in for a new treat next week. This time they have four additional teams bringing you a total of four qualification slots. Not excited yet? Well, maybe some of the names that can change that. Evil Geniuses will be participating this time around, as well as Root Gaming, Vega Squadron, Team Alternate, YOE Flash Wolves, My Insanity, and XMG. Those aren't all the participating teams, though. We are excited for some of the possible outcomes in round two. We might see EG battling out versus Root or My Insanity meeting XMG in round two. The qualification and the playoffs will be brought, played online, with the finals, however, will be offline. Visit acer.taketv.net for more information. After Super Week 8 and the subsequent break, the LCS North America will be back with the vengeance in the upcoming Week 9. Let's start with the standings. Uh, Team Solo Mid and Cloud9 HyperX are both riding top of the wave as per usual. Uncontested champions with no natural predators outside of one another. Cloud9 is currently an impressive score of 16 wins and 4 losses, one win less than that of TSM's enviable 17 and 3. Even though TSM will probably have an easy game against XTG in the first place, they will come up against Team Dignitas on the following day. Sure, Team Dignitas isn't quite the bee's knees right now, but they're constantly improving and should never be counted out of the running, ever. Be cautious of the Dark Horse TSF. Cloud9 is clearly the easier of the matchups. If any new results uh, recently have been indication of things, they'll be coming up against Team Coast on the first day. Team Coast is still struggling with proving themselves, even though they have a new roster. Can they still potentially be a threat to anyone who isn't careful? Yes. And on the second day, they will meet Evil Geniuses, who are currently behind Team Coast in the standings, but have proven so often that they deserve to be handled as a top-tier team when they can put it together. Now, let's see whether they can get things done in the last few weeks. 
Currently in the third place, CLG will face the same opponents as Cloud9, but on different days. These matches could potentially get more interesting since the performance gap isn't that far in comparison between Cloud9 and Coast slash EG. Putting these guys aside, here's a team we haven't talked about yet. This seems to always be forgotten, Team Curse. They struggled a lot in the past, but were recently able to improve and climb up two places in the standings, passing opponents Team Coast and Evil Geniuses. It'll be interesting to see if they are reaching out for more success towards the end of LCS North America. Their first opponents this week will be Team Dignitas, who enjoy a single win lead over them. And now this could be the exciting, life-changing clash for somebody. Their second opponent will be the underdogs of the event, XDG, who are still in last place with a score of 5 wins and 15 losses. Make sure to watch all the action over at LLEsports.com with Freak, Riv, Kobe, and all the gang. In League of Legends are new updates about Rumble and his incoming skin. A video has been posted in which you can see his current looks and animation, which are pretty cool to watch. Here's an idea. Take a look. Rumble certainly looks blazing. Before we let you off the hook, let's take a look at some of the events to watch this weekend. First off, we want to talk about the Vasa Cast Invitational 2014. That'll be starting tomorrow, ending on Sunday. Vasa will be featuring some of the sickest matches we'll see in 2014, with Cats facing off against Rowe in the round of 32. Kane, who recently announced that he'll be going to Korea for training, he'll be battling Mana. And those aren't the matches that you'll be looking out for, though. You have players like The Muslim, Hyun, Jeremy's favorite TLO, and Select participating as well. The prize pool of $5,000, we're sure that they'll give it their best. Follow the action with the lively commentator, twitch.tv slash VasaCast. Less of a StarCraft 2 person and more of a Dota guy, then we have the perfect show for you this weekend. Korea's Dota 2 League features an all-out war between Team Zephyr and 5 and Q. The best three will feature awesome plays, and we're sure the, cloud f the crowd favorites, Blitz and Purge, will give it their best. We're, as always, excited to see Team Zephyr in action. Jump to twitch.tv slash KDL underscore EN or twitch.tv slash Beyond the Summit for the English coverage. The show starts 23rd of March, 2 p.m. Korean Standard Time. But wait, what if you're a Demacian kind of guy? Well, fear not, you won't be left in the cold, as just we mentioned a few minutes ago, LCS North America. America continues week nine. As we just talked about, North American teams are scheduled to show us some truly nerve-wracking and exciting matches. This is the week which could decide most of what the playoff action will go. It begins at 12 p.m. noon at Pacific Standard Time, Saturday and Sunday. Tune in twitch.tv slash Riot Games and check all the standings and schedule, lolesports.com. And that does it. That's all the news that we have for you today. If you have anything you want to share, feel free to send us an email, news at ESGNTV.com. From Dan Chow and the rest of the crew here at Studio One, have a good evening. Fight Night StarCraft 2 is coming up next.